Hi everyone, it's Lynn from Cotton Art Studio. And hello, it's Brenda from Concrete Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. And today we're going to talk about quilt appraisals. This is something I have so many questions on, Lynn, and I'm so glad that you were willing to speak to our both of our viewers about this topic. Okay. So <laughs> I think it's a really important topic. I mean, I think that um, we do this really great art form and we don't value it. And appraisal is a way to value what we do. Yes, yes, very much. I, you know, it's, uh, and it, there's so many, I have so many questions right now, but okay. So what, you're a certified quilt appraiser. What mm -hmm. made you become that? Like what, what was your driving force? What was your reason? <laughs> Well, when I first started quilting, I joined a guild, as you do. Yeah. And um, so there was a sort of, and I was overwhelmed by the amount of talent in the guild. And I was brand new and, you know, didn't think I could do some of the stuff that these people were doing, which was just incredible in my eyes. And so I, I they happened to have an appraiser come and speak one month for a lecture. And I, they were talking about history and I love history. And they were talking about, you know, just exploring different, you know, kind of a, a mystery, kind of figuring out what date this is and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I can do that. I can do that. <laughs> and at the time, I was working full time and my husband didn't have as much vacation time as I did. So I was looking for a place to go and spend vacation on something that I wanted to do because he didn't have the time off. So um, I went to Paducah and found that you could take appraisal classes and went to Paducah to the AQS show one year and took appraisal classes. And that was my vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, you do, you got to follow your passions, right? I mean, you know, and just, you know, wing it, let's go, right? But well, and it was something like I knew he wasn't going to go do or something, you know, and I have family kind of close to the area. So it was kind of an excuse to go see my family and go find out more about quilts. And it just worked out well. Okay, I guess my my first question to you now I know you probably got a you know a big long talk and we haven't talked about what questions I'm asking or anything. But oh no, yeah. What are appraisals used for? Like okay. <clears throat> a couple of things. First, insurance. Um, if something happened to your quilt, you have an appraisal. Your somebody is documented and say this is what it is worth. Now in the states, I don't know about other countries. But in the States, um, insurance companies will not give you the valued worth of your quilted items after they are seven years old because they see them as being used and they diminish in value. Right. Yeah. So if they give you new money for, you know, let's say, unfortunately, your house burns down and you have all these quilts, if you don't have appraisals on them, then you can say, I have all these quilts. But the insurance company is going to go, well, if they're over seven years old, we don't have any money for that. Or at the most, they'll give you $100 to go buy a quilt at, you know, a big box store or something, which we all know, uh, there's not a quilt in my collection that I've done or that I, that are older that has, that's worth more than a hundred bucks. Yeah, I just some raw materials alone. I was doing, um, I was pricing out a project for a girlfriend, and this was before the price of can uh, cotton went up in Canada. It was six hundred and sixty-three dollars just for raw materials, not a cent for my time. And I was like, right, wow, yeah. So insurance is one reason. The second reason is if you were selling this at market cost, so. You are, you're a quilt artist and you sell your work, you may need a, an, an appraisal for market value. I don't see those as very often. I rarely do those. I've worked with, there's a couple of artists around here and I know what they sell their quilts for. So usually it's kind of in that area of what they're selling their quilts for. And these are art quilters. Um, and then the third reason that you would have an appraisal done is donation. So if I'm donating to a charity, a quilted work, um, then I would get an appraisal done for that donation. Now, the thing with that is, at least in the States, and I'm, it's probably true in other countries as well, um, you cannot 
deduct from your taxes in the states any amount of time that you put into the quilt. So for example, you know, what you were talking about, like there's $600 in material, but yep. my time is worth, you know, $20 an hour or whatever. And it took me a hundred hours to do this. Then none of that is deductible for a donation. You can only deduct what it cost you. So the $600 for the materials. And then if you had it quilted by somebody else, then the cost of that quilting, that would be a part of your donation for your tax deduction. So that's a little bit, definitely work with your local quilt appraiser um, if you have a donation that you wanna give to somebody. Yeah, the way to look at that a little bit different though is also is if you give it to your son and your son donates it, he can take the whole the whole cost off ah. because he didn't do anything, right? Okay. So, you know, think about how you're doing it too. But if you had your hand in it, um, you cannot take your time costs for a donation. Yeah, see here in Canada, what we do here is uh, a lot of the guilds, they'll run the community service, right? And they'll organize... You know, charity quilts be given to X organization. If the quilter gives directly to the X organization, they would get a charitable donation receipt based right. on value that is, you know, kind of a fix. They just, everybody gets a hundred bucks for every quilt and that's it, right? They don't do any like fancy appraisals. But if you give to the guild and then they give to the charity, you get nothing, right? right. So. And the other part of the argument... And that would be true here as well. Yeah. The other part of the argument here in Canada is what's the difference between appraisals and fair market value? Because okay. fair market value and appraisals sometimes are quite a bit different. Well, all right. So there's two different kinds of uh, value that you, when I look at an appraisal that determine the value of the quilt. One is reconstruction. And two is fair market value. Now, 90% of the time, the fair market value of a quilt is, I'm, if I'm applying that to a quilt, it's vintage or antique. Right. Because I can't recreate that. I do not have the fabric from 1930 to recreate this grandmother's flower garden that's in front of me. So that's fair market value means what are grandmother's flower garden quilts from the 1930s being sold for in my area? That's the fair market value in my area. Right. And it has to be sold by an educated buyer and an educated seller. Right. So if you go to a rummage sale at some or a garage sale at somebody's house and you find this, you know, $10 quilt, you win. Yay. But I can't, I can't use that as a fair market value because the seller was not knowledgeable. Right. Right. So you, everything has to be equal. So it has to be, so fair market value is where I would look at vintage or antique quilts and what they're selling for that condition, that, that pattern and that um, age. Right. So right. that's fair market value. Reconstruction is where you bring to me a brand new quilt, like the one behind you. Yeah. And I look at it and I say, okay, this was newly made. What would it cost me to recreate this or reconstruct this quilt? And that's when I start looking at, oh, you've got $600 in fabric. Oh, you, it took you, let's say 40 hours to cut and piece that quilt at $20 an hour. Right. Boom, that's how much. What is, did it cost to do the binding, right? So that is a reconstruction cost. And those can be um, much more expensive because I have to look at current price of fabric. Whereas fair market value, I couldn't look at the price of fabric because I can't get it. Right. I mean, no, there are vintage sellers out there that sell, you know, 1930s fabric, but it's not readily available to me. You have to go to a specialty, you know, store. So that can't be a reconstruction. That has to be a fair market value appraisal, whereas reconstruction is like newly made quilts. And what I think most quilters don't realize 
is that newly made quilts are worth a lot of money. Yeah, well, I well like this quilt behind me here, we're going to be running a sew along for this. This is a reconstruction of my grandmother's quilt. And her blocks finished at like five inches. And Those like, are five inch blocks behind you. Oh, no, 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 no. no. Five in, a five inch block? My thumb would cover the little squares, right? Yeah. I mean, no, we're not doing a five inch square, no. <laughs> you know, that'd be up my alley. I'm like, let's do little teeny tiny. Little tiny, I know. I, and some people really love that, you know, the smaller the better, but... I think sometimes when you're like, well, I'm going to be teaching either both the hand and the, the sewing machine. So it's kind of like, okay, let's go with what your jam is, you know? So. Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. I, I don't think we're, I'm glad you're teaching some hand piecing. I need to do that because I really like hand piecing. So. Well, and I think there's a whole uh, slow stitch movement happening now throughout North America and Europe and it is uh, soothing right i mean i i always try to do something at night once i finished you know the the craziness in my sewing room and running around and after supper i try and sit and do some hand sewing because it just relaxes me you know so yeah yeah i do the, my only problem with a hand sewing is you do have to prep it <laughs> that takes organization so you know i prep little things that i carried around i made a king size hand sewn hand piece quilt I loved it but I machine pieced it and everybody got mad at me and I was like I'm good at long arming yeah well yeah I, do. yeah go I don't with care it. that I hand piece all day I still <laughs> long armed it do do what you can do right go go hang out and do what you, you yeah no since we're on this topic of hand sewing versus machine sewing or hand quilting versus long arming or whatever is there a difference in the appraisals when you're looking at that kind of thing? Like, are we, you know, I, there's a lot of like artists that are doing like some amazing free motion quilting with their long arms or with their domestic sewing machine. And then, you know, there's a hand quilting that's very basic and just basically follows the outline of the block and, you know, it looks great and that's all you have to worry about, right? So. Well, okay. So. It depends on what I'm doing. Like if we're looking at a vintage or antique quilt, it is what it is. So it's like this is hand pieced, but hand piecing something from the 1930s, totally normal. Like that would not be surprising that it was hand pieced. If I'm looking at something from the 1800s, hand pieced, I'm not shocked that I'm seeing a hand pieced quilt. In fact, I'm more shocked if I'm seeing a machine piece quilt. Yeah. I'm looking for reasons why it's not 1800s at that point. Right. Because that's not as common. Not that we didn't have sewing machines. We did. But you definitely were of a wealthier um, status before you were seeing those. Um, so, like, at vintage or antique, it still looked like fair market, right? So I'm still looking at what that quilt would sell for at that time, you know, that pattern at that age in that condition. Still the same. Now, when you get into interesting conversations is when you're doing reconstruction and you're looking at pricing what it would cost for reconstruction of a quilt and the quilt in front of me, let's say is hand pieced very, I mean, uh, hand quilted, very simple, basic hand quilting. Well, honestly, there are not a ton of people doing hand quilting for other people. No. So it's harder to find that. Now, I will say that there are Amish, country areas at least in our country where you can send a quilt top off they will hand quilt it so i have to look at what they're charging yes. like how much are they charging for a hand quilted quilt all right now if it's machine quilted domestic or long arms then you get into all the conversations of well is this a meander pattern that people are charging two cents a square inch then that's my cost of reconstruction. Is this a custom quilted long arm? <laughs> and, and it's got, I, I will tell you, some of my quilts have hundreds of hours of quilting in them. Yes. Then I'm looking at, well, what is the going rate for that kind of custom quilting? And I personally, when I custom quilt for people, I charge $35 an hour 
three hour minimum. And I, you know, I've got quilts that have 200 hours in them. So I have to look at the quilt and go, okay, how, cause I know how long it takes to do certain things. Right. And I ask questions. Why did somebody charge you? You know, if you're bringing me a brand new quilt, I'm asking you, did you pay to have this done? If you did, how much did you pay? Cause that's how much the cost that I'm going to calculate into what the insurance values were. Wow. Yeah. So it depends on what you're doing. You know, it's all about the choices that you made to get this product in front of me. Right. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I know a lot of people are like, I have students that are asking, should I, I hand piece this? So should I hand quilt it? And it's like, well, will it add to the appraisal or, you know, I, it's not so much will it add to the appraisal for me, but it's your quilt and what do you want? Well, yeah, that's you right. Know, I mean, I wouldn't look at, I don't look at my own work with, um, does this make it more valuable? Right. Okay. No, does it make me happy? <laughs> yes. That's what I'm interested in. So, and then as an appraisal, I just look at what you did and then that's how much it's worth. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's kind of not necessarily the hand versus a sewing machine. It's not, yeah, because, I mean, you can have I mean, standing hand piecing and hand quilting, too. That is just like. Oh, yeah. And I look at that and I take that into consideration, um, especially if, you know, like I did a king size hand piece quilt. It took me a year to do. It yeah. took me a year to hand piece that thing. Now, it didn't take me as long to quilt it, even though it's custom quilted, but I still know the amount of time that it took to get there. Well, that sunflower quilt I did for my channel there in the last winter, I'm still quilting it. I'm still hand quilting it. That's like... Oh, yeah. And there's yeah. so much brown. <laughs> there's so much brown. <laughs> I wasn't thinking. I mean, I, you know, I like brown, but so much of it when you're hand quilting it you know <laughs> i know yeah. i know and you can do a lot more things too with hand quilting like you can pull in a lot of fullness oh yeah hand quilting very easily where with a you domestic can do the, yeah domestic may not but I, in a long arm you can yeah, yeah i've pulled in some fullness that it was like ooh, okay okay but i think i think you get better at putting on borders when you start doing your own quilting yes Yes. Well, I did, when I put on the borders, everything matched up and it was just like, but I still have some fullness. I'm like, mm, yeah. that's strange. Oh, wow. Well. That's okay. Anyways, my last big question I want to ask you, okay. what was your most interesting piece that you had the chance to appraise? So, um, there's a couple. One, okay. there is a, uh, I, I'm on the board of a local quilt museum in Carrollton, Georgia. Right. And they have a um, 1700s border per se quilt that was brought in by a random person that said, this has been under the car and we don't want it. Do y'all want it? So it was just like dropped off and it is incredible it's not in the best shape there's some definitely fugitive issues with it in that it's super old i mean it's 1700s yeah it was made from a certain chintz and we were able to trace back that chintz um and it's incredible the other one that is just incredible to me is i was at a show in north georgia and this lady brought in a suitcase and had a quilt in it and I was busy with someone and I said if you just want to leave that here that's fine I'm going to be in here and you can go look at the show and I'll you know when that we're done you can come back and I'll do yours right and she was like oh no no I do not leave this anywhere and I was like okay you know no problem <laughs> yeah just, I was just trying to be helpful in that you're not dragging around the suitcase yeah room, right so anyway she comes back she brings the suitcase we open it up it was, um, the providence was, it was from a museum that went out of business and she bought it from the museum. 
And the museum's providence was, it was a quilt that was made by soldiers that were hospitalized in Washington DC area after the civil war. Oh. And the entire quilt front and back was made from union and Confederate uniforms. And oh. every, and it was all hand pieced. It was the heaviest quilt I've ever had in my hand in my life. It was all hand pieced, of course. It was wool. It was, it had gray and blue and some of the red um, wool that they use and the yellow from the Confederate. So the yeah. yellow and gray were from the Confederate uniforms and the blue and the red were from the Union uniforms. Oh, wow. And they had used, the story was, and the provenance that she showed me from the museum was that um, they were using quilting with these recovering soldiers as a way to, you know, rehabilitate some of them who were bedridden and had some really, you know, medical issues. Right. And it was one of the most fascinating pieces I've ever had the privilege of seeing in my life. Um, I will never forget that quilt. It was gorgeous, but it was a different pattern of wool on both sides. And it was the heaviest quilt I've ever seen. It was probably at least a large queen, if not pushing a king size. Like it was like a hundred by a hundred and something. Oh, um, wow. Huge, huge quilt, weighed a ton. Um, and what made it so interesting from a fair market standpoint and what made it difficult, I did a lot of research on this one more than I do on other quilts, is that anytime you look at fair market, you look at collectability, like who would be interested in owning this, right? Yeah. And so with that specific quilt, you had Civil War. So anybody who's interested in collecting Civil War from the States, that, that foundation. Then you had the medical aspect that it was a medical, um, you know, it was done as a rehabilitation in a hospital. So that medical aspect made it, so collectors of medical things. And then you had collectors of military. So I think it's, I, th I think it's weird just to interject. There's a post-traumatic stress syndrome and they do bring in art to help those, those people yeah. that are going through post-traumatic stress. And I just, they knew and back they then. And they were doing it 150 years ago. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so, so you've got medical, you've got military, you've got civil war, and you've got quilters. Yes. Who are interested in this. So um, I ended up contacting some people who had more um, historical civil war knowledge than I did and talked to them. And um, it was just, it was one of those pieces that I will never forget. I saw, I it was the most surprising, you know, you're in a little quilt show and, North Georgia and all of a sudden you get this unbelievable and it was just it was perfect it like a lot of times when you're brought older stuff you you get into the question of is this real am I looking at what I think I'm looking at and then yeah. you look for reasons for it not to be real you yeah. know does this still match up to everything I know about the historical textile and so it did it was incredible and um just a fun that was the most the cool quilt I've ever seen one of the things that the questions that just popped in my head is what about people who repair quilts like there's some argument now too about leaving the holes and the rips and the tears and the, you know the wear marks versus fixing it to keep it vibrant and alive and and I'm like it's your quilt yeah it is your quilt how do you want to use this quilt and if it's got a big hole in it and you just want to pack it up and store it in a cedar chest good for you but it's not going to be seen it's not going to be used you know I, I, it's your quilt now is it one of those quilts that I always ask like what do you want to do with it like why is this sentimental to you or did you just pick it up at a random you yeah. know, yard sale or something well if it's sentimental because grandma made it and all the grandkids slept under it and now there's you know 10 great grandkids and it's got this big hole in it, you know, I'm always like, cut it up, like cut it up, frame it, little pieces of it and give it to the, you know, 10 great grandkids that have something from their great grandmother that was made that they have tangible, that there's no one 
like one person can't enjoy it anymore because there is big hole in it right. or make teddy bears or, you know, little find some way that you can share it among others. Now, do you do that with a pristine quilt? Probably not, but oh, yeah, you know, it's your quilt. How do you want it to preserve it and stuff? I get asked this a lot, especially with crazy quilts. Um, we see a ton of crazy quilts, at least in this country. I see the two quilts I see most when I do an appraisal day is grandmother's flower garden and a crazy quilt. Oh, so I'm seeing stuff from the 1930s all the time. And I'm seeing crazy quilts. And the reason I see so many crazy quilts is because they were a status and they weren't used. Well, and the Victorian crazy quilts too, it was all about the fabrics and the, right. the the embroidery and you know it was it was a status yeah i had money i spent it on this you know silk fabric i have domestic skills here's my hand embroidery techniques that i so it showed off women's work it and it was not used it was a throw that was on the back of the settee or a chair and it wasn't used because it was made and it had these delicate fabrics in it well they were folded up and put away and we've still we see a lot of them today so they're not really rare um in fact they're pretty common but they're precious because they have so much work into them and people have saved them because yeah. they were to be saved um so it's not one of those quilts that you see used all the time and that's why we see so many of them Right. Yeah. Well, I, they're like, for me, those quilts are just the textures. Like you go from velveteen to silk to satin to that Wedgwood, the satin, satin upholstery kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. They're just gorgeous. Yeah. Gorgeous. They're like, I guess they're like the first fidget quilts. You know what I mean? With all the <laughs> the first really style are. quilts. Yeah. yeah. They really are. Um, they're gorgeous and I love them. I I have made my own version of a, a, a crazy quilt that I showed you and, and wrote a pattern for that just because I wanted to honor the the heritage of that. Right. Well, yeah. And I mean, they're, it's all, they're all beautiful. They're all beautiful in their own way. Yeah. The ones that are really are just fascinate me are the ones that have the painted, like they'll be oh, ribbons yeah. that are painted um and then i like how they've hidden stuff in from you know spider webs to little ladybugs or flower or bouquet or nosegay or something like that yeah yeah very cool very mm -hmm. cool indeed well lynn i want to thank you for talking to us about quilt appraisals that is just i am so glad that we got the chance to connect here today and and do our do our little chat it was wonderful and very informative very informative okay two things i want to leave the reviewers with first okay. label 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 your oh quilts. yes oh label, yeah. label 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 your quilts because that makes my job easier um and put when you made it who you made it for and don't just put mom put her name because we all have moms yes <laughs> put her name <laughs> or who it was and who made it their name not daughter or favored son or whatever but the name and then if it's for a special occasion like um this was made for their wedding or this was made for their birthday or this was made for their graduation from college or whatever label 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 number one and number two um get your quilt appraised yes they're valuable now if viewers on my channel have more questions they want to ask you about quilt appraisals can you get back to them or do they sure, need to go to your channel and ask you there um, well, I won't see it if it's on your channel. So just go to my channel and just comment on the video and I'll answer. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Okay, Lynn, you take care. All right. Everybody have a wonderful week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Brenda. My husband and I would like to thank you for watching today. We're so happy about the way our channel has grown and we just want to wish you so well in your journey along with us. Please like, share, and subscribe, and tell your friends. Now, the next thing is this quilt. We are wondering if you guys would like this quilt as a free sew along on this channel this fall, this coming fall, winter. We were kind of thinking that this one would be really fun to do. We could do it in a larger size or a smaller size. It's up to you, but this one was a lot of fun to make, and it's all 
it, it lends itself to being hand stitched, but you can also do this on a sewing machine as well. So let us know in the comments below. Remember, share, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Okay, have a great weekend. Bye.